When I was 18, I boxed up everything I had, snuck out of my parents' house, and ran away from home to become a video game streamer. This is my story. It was my dream to be a full-time streamer, but my parents were not that supportive, no matter how much I tried to explain it to them. But little did they know, my interest in making videos started way back in middle school, when I had the chance to edit a video for a history project. And at the time, I think my parents just assumed that making videos was like any one of my other hobbies, like playing PlayStation, Yu-Gi-Oh!, or basketball. But it wasn't. And soon it would become more than a hobby because my life was completely changed when I got detention. While I was sitting there counting the minutes until it was over, I saw the kid who was monitoring us playing a game I'd never seen before. It was called RuneScape. And at that moment, I became completely immersed in the world of gaming. It felt like an entire universe had opened up for me. A universe that was full of video games that were all begging to be explored. So I grabbed my gear and started my quest to play every game that I could get my hands on. And of course, I was still playing RuneScape. But I wasn't just playing. I was watching YouTubers like Chris Archie and SparkMac play too. And ever since I had that thought, it gnawed at the back of my head like a RuneScape goblin. I couldn't let it go. I knew I wanted to be a YouTuber. My parents told me that my life shouldn't revolve around video games and YouTube, and that I had more important responsibilities to take care of, like, my homework but that didn't stop me i spent every free moment i had creating videos i made stick figure fighting videos for my first ever youtube channel i made sketches and stunt videos with my brothers and my cousin which were filmed on flip phones so the image quality looked like this and eventually my brothers and i started making runescape content we made commentary videos montages and highlights but at some point gaming started to have an effect on my other hobbies like one time at basketball practice my coach was reviewing our grades to make sure we could stay on the team and when he got to my name he was like ollie i'm surprised you have such good grades considering all the silly youtube videos you keep making and everyone started laughing so that basically became a running joke. Like if I was underperforming, people would just blame it on the fact that I was spending my time making YouTube videos and that was annoying. But I used that to fuel my drive to work even harder. And I did. It wasn't long after that, me and my brothers did our first ever Twitch live stream, which peaked at 650 viewers, which was insane considering it was our first stream. And after that, I really felt like we were on our way to making streaming a full-time job. But making streaming a full-time job wasn't easy. Over time, my brothers and my cousin stopped streaming with me. So I became a solo act. And a few years later, I made a big change. I stopped making RuneScape videos. And I transitioned to a new game called Elder Scrolls Online. I created content for every update, teaser, and leak. And because of that, people were coming to me for advice on how to play the game. Every single day, I was waking up with the goal to become the best PvP player I can become. And that I did. I was winning back-to-back -back solo tournaments and duo tournaments. And I figured out how to fight outnumbered, which many people didn't know how to do at the time. And as I did that, my Twitch channel began to grow. And it all came down to this big decision. I want to be a pro gamer. You what? I mean, and as my parents sat there staring at me, I told them that I wanted to take a gap year after graduating high school to pursue content creation full time. But let's just say they were not thrilled to hear any of that. Because to them, going to college and getting a degree was a very prestigious thing. It was one of the reasons that they left their families to come to America in the first place which is why they really pushed me and my siblings to take our education seriously, to strive to be engineers and doctors and engineers or doctors or doctors and engineers. You get the point. They honestly felt that if I pursued being a streamer, I'd jeopardize my future and be disrespecting everything that they've done for me. I tried to show them that I'd already found some success in doing it. I, I tried to explain how passionate I was about it and that I'd do anything to achieve my dream. But they didn't listen and i was forced to enroll in college and this was a really hard time for me i honestly felt trapped but what's funny is my parents actually thought that i was a good student but most of the time i was skipping class so that i could stream and if i was in class i'd be on my laptop trying to plan my next youtube video 
And listen, don't do this, okay? I'm not proud of the fact that I lied to my parents about going to school. But at the same time, it was because of that dedication that I finally became a Twitch partner, which was a big moment for me because it meant I was one step closer to making streaming a full-time job. And because of that, I had the confidence to sit down with my parents again and say, look, by the end of the summer, if I have enough subscribers to make enough money to support myself, I'm gonna take a break from college to pursue streaming even harder. And initially they agreed. They ended up giving me a goal of meeting the mark of 500 paying subscribers by the end of the summer. So I worked hard to make that happen. And by the end of the summer, I hit that mark, but it didn't matter. They still wanted me to go back to school despite reaching the goal. So for weeks, I asked myself, what should I do? I mean, this was my dream and I didn't want to let it slip away. So I did the only thing I knew to do. I had to bet on myself. I boxed up my computer, packed my clothes in a black trash bag, and I left. Then I booked myself a hotel room while I looked for a new place to live, which proved to be way harder than I thought it'd be because none of the apartments thought streaming video games was a real job. And not only that, somehow every single leasing consultant had no idea what Twitch or YouTube even was. But finally, after searching what felt like the entire state of Texas and paying a huge security deposit, I had a home. And shortly after that, I met my future wife, Danielle, who's my rock, my partner in crime. I'm pretty sure that if you looked up girl boss in the dictionary, it'd just be a picture of her. And if it wasn't for the support of her and of you guys, I'd never been able to get a place of my own. But just because I had a lot of support doesn't mean I didn't experience fear and doubt. There was a lot of times that I was afraid of hitting the start streaming button. Most of those times were because of me believing that I wasn't entertaining enough or feeling like I was irrelevant. Sometimes I doubted myself so much that I just tell myself that no one cared. Despite those feelings, I had to keep fighting because I wasn't gonna give up on my dreams. So I worked even harder and started streaming every day on Twitch, posting five days a week on YouTube and found creative ways to grow my channel. Then by the end of 2016, I began to make some changes to my content by playing ESO less often and drifting more into Overwatch and For Honor. And as my confidence grew, I started playing in For Honor tournaments and I actually became one of the top five players in the game. But then things really started to slow down. I stopped growing as fast. And so after a while, I started to feel stuck. So I began to look to make a jump to a bigger game. I tried CSGO, H1Z1, PUBG, but then someone drew my attention to a new battle royale game called Fortnite. And I wasn't into it at first. It had this goofy, cartoony look to it. And so I thought it looked kind of childish, but I decided to give it a shot anyway. Fortnite was still a new game. And since I had built my audience around ESO and For Honor, I'd lost 80% of my viewership since I'd started playing. So I came up with a new strategy. I started my stream much earlier than any of the big streamers were just for a chance of getting noticed. And that actually worked. More people were coming to my stream, but I still needed something else to help me stand out. Fortnite had just added the launch pad to the game. And I started thinking, how can I eliminate someone using a launch pad? And that's when this happened. Yes! Oh my God, it worked! And these viral clips were huge for me. They helped put me on the map and brought me the recognition needed for me to participate in the very first Friday Fortnite, which I ended up winning with my buddy, Nick Merckx. And at this moment, I had seen some success in other games and I had a lucky break in Fortnite, but I still felt like I hadn't solidified myself. I needed to do something bigger and greater to prove it to my parents, my brothers, my basketball coach, and to myself that I can make it long-term as a gaming content creator. And it wasn't until this moment that the opportunity presented itself. Dr. Lupo was hosting a big charity stream for St. Jude with Ninja and Tim the Tapman and Courage JD and I was invited to be there. So I felt a lot of pressure. Not only was I playing with some of the biggest streamers playing Fortnite, charity donations were also based off of the things we did in the game. One of the biggest being a $25,000 bonus if you got a headshot snipe while rocket riding. And sure enough, on my first game, I hopped on a rocket and headshot sniped the very last player. All right, he's weak, he's weak right here. The 360 jump I hit him off the rocket. Oh Viper, you sniped him off the rocket? Yes, I did. And then during the next game, I clutched the win by throwing two traps on a wall that eliminated the opposing squad. 
and Dr. Lupo started cheering me on. Ninja was losing it. Everyone went crazy. It was seriously one of the best moments of my career because that was the moment that I felt like I had finally made it. And the rest was history. After years of dedication, I was finally able to prove to myself and my parents and feel like I had made it as a content creator. And what's funny is my parents even started pushing my brothers to start streaming as well, which just goes to show how far they've come. Seriously, guys, if you believe in yourself and trust in your ability to persevere through hard things, the doubt and fear that creeps up on you doesn't stand a chance. The only person standing in your way is yourself. Thank you so much for watching.